Hi, I'm Lakeisha Wolf. And I'm Jimmy Skipler. Ahead on KUJW News, we'll take a look at airplane safety and see if flying is really as safe as we think it is. Plus, Councilman Salahuddin Dean tells us why he's in the front line battle for a civilian review board. We'll also take a look at the annual PBMF Urban Journalism Workshop. All these stories and more coming up next. Want to know what tuberous sclerosis is? Okay. Tuberous sclerosis is autism. Tuberous sclerosis is epilepsy. It's kidney failure, brain damage, mental disabilities, and tumors in every major organ. Tuberous sclerosis is Cody and Riley and Emily and Travis and Danielle. Sometimes it helps to put a face with a name. Tonight on Channel 11 News First at 5, a Pat Bus drives right into a gang shootout. There were multiple rounds fired from a shotgun. See how it all ended. New at 5.30, this man shot a bear that was coming after his children, then got fined for it. Now, another bear is knocking at his door. See how he protects his family this time. And at 6, will these majorettes march on their high school squad? Today is decision day. Watch Channel 11 News at 5, 5.30 and 6. More news, more often. Live from Television Hill, it's KUJW News. With your anchors, Jimmy Skip with and Lakeisha Wolf. With weather with Robert West and sports with Deborah Todd. And now, KUJW News. Hi, I'm Jimmy Skipworth. And I'm Lakeisha Wolf. In the wake of the Olympic bombing, downtown Pittsburgh has had its share of bomb scares. Or David Mead has the story. Lieutenant Mark Remutis of the Pittsburgh SWAT team says, we've only had a few bomb scares, all of which are still under investigation. Uh, that doesn't mean that we're going to let down our guard. Uh, we consider any type of threat, uh, whether it be the, the threat of a bomb or the threat of any other violence, uh, we consider it uh, to be serious and we will take it seriously uh, until we know otherwise. Remutis is confident that his men can control the situation. We have four uh, bomb technicians here who have been trained by the FBI and uh, they continue to receive updates and go to training seminars and uh, I believe that we'll be able to handle anything that comes our way. Recent bomb threats have caused heightened awareness in the city of Pittsburgh. I'm David Mead reporting for KUJW News. Lieutenant Ramudis says the Pittsburgh bomb squad stays on duty 24 hours a day. In light of the recent TWA Flight 800 crash, we decided to check and see if the, if the American flying public is worried about terrorism. Tanel Thurman reports. At the most, the passengers we checked with didn't mind the security delays, and many of them were philosophical about dying in a plane. Because of the planes that have crashed, I still have no fear, because I do understand when God makes this call, we have to answer whether it's on the ground or in the air. I've never fl flown before, and I don't know. Are you afraid to fly? I think I'd be nervous, yeah. But as far as uh, terror stuff goes, uh, I don't know, there doesn't seem to be a lot of security around here. I, could, I was worried that somebody was going to steal my bag and walk out because there aren't any checkers or anybody checking things. While local travel agencies and airlines refuse to comment on plane safety, it seems as though many travelers are very concerned, but will not let their fears get in the way of their love for flying. Reporting for KUJW News, I'm Tanel Thurman. Some Pittsburgh police officers have been accused of brutality. The NAACP and the ACLU have filed suit against them, prompting calls at City Council for a Civilian Review Board. Our reporter, Nikisha Moore, has the story. City Councilman Salah Udin believes it is very important to restore trust and confidence in the city's police department. A historic confrontation between the police department and some sectors of my constituency and the more I can do to minimize that contention and create an atmosphere of trust and cooperation and professional demeanor both on the part of the community and on the part of the police, the better it is for both the police and the community. As of right now, Councilman Salah Adin has four votes in his favor to pass the legislation for the Civilian Police Review Board. This is Nikisha Moore reporting for KUJW News. 
City Council will soon announce when the next set of public hearings for the board will be held. In other news, the Hill House's Young Mothers program helps new moms get and hold full-time employment while caring for their children. Here is KUJW's Cecily Hardaway. Director Stephen McIsaac says this program is designed to develop a total support network for young women and mothers. By and large, and I don't have a specific statistic for you, it would be nice if I did, but by and large, um, I see women from the program every day as I go through downtown or wherever, and there's a, a large number of the young ladies now who are very much self-supporting or uh, providing good role models for themselves and their children who have moved out of public housing, who have moved off the welfare system. Twan Becton is a graduate of the Young Mothers Program. She says that it has broadened her horizons. Uh, the best thing I got out of this program is uh, a jump start to my future for myself and my children to better our lives through education, which the Hill House has provided a jump start on my education, and through the family-like atmosphere that the Hill House gives you is support within the Hill House. The Hill House Association's Young Mothers Program begins a new term in the fall. Reporting for KUJW News, this is Cecily Hardaway. The Young Mothers Program began on July 1st and runs through to Ju June 30th of next year. To get involved, call the Hill House at 392-4429. That's 392-4429. Coming up next, our weatherman Robert West has our five-day forecast. I hear it's supposed to be a great weekend, Jimmy. It is. Tonight on Channel 11 News First at 5, a Pat bus drives right into a gang shootout. There were multiple rounds fired from a shotgun. See how it all ended. New at 5.30, this man shot a bear that was coming after his children, then got fined for it. Now, another bear is knocking at his door. See how he protects his family this time. And at 6, will these majorettes march on their high school squad? Today is Decision Day. Watch Channel 11 News at 5, 5.30 and 6. More news, more often. Geiger isn't thinking about folic acid. She may not know it's more important for a woman to have folic acid in her system at the time of conception and for the first month of pregnancy to help reduce the risk of certain birth defects. And she may not be aware Florida orange juice is an excellent source of folic acid. She thought by drinking a large glass of orange juice, she'd just been doing something healthy for herself. 100% pure Florida orange juice. Are you drinking enough? This is Channel 11 Carnegie Science Center weather. Right now we have a temperature of 66 degrees, which is very low compared to earlier this week. Our high today was 79 degrees and our low reached a low of 68 degrees. Let's now see, as you see, we have a humidity of 68%. The winds came 7 miles per hour to the north and the barometer reached 30.11 steady. The precipitation reached 0.01. Let's now look at our satellite. As you can see, the cloud cover moves over Pittsburgh all the way up the east coast towards New York. The chance of us getting rain this week is very slim. Let's now look at our forecast. Tonight, clear and cool with a, comf a very comfortable weather with a low of 58 degrees. Tomorrow, mostly sunny, pleasant, high of 78 degrees. As we now look at our five-day forecast, we see Saturday, sunny, 78 degrees with a low of 55. On Sunday, the clear skies, high 81, a low of 57 degrees. As we move to Monday, we see partly clouds with a high 84 and a low 61. On Tuesday, possible thunderstorms with a high 85 and a low of 66. On Wednesday, the clouds come back with a high 80 and a low of 61 degrees. In my opinion, this is going to be a great week. Take it from me, I'm the weatherman. Back to you, Jim and Lakeisha. Thanks for that good forecast, Rob. The Pittsburgh Black Media Federation held its annual Urban Journalism Workshop. This week-long event started last Saturday and ends today. Our reporter, Tennille Walker, has the story. Almost 30 students participate in a rigorous series of activities that causes them to work long hours. Workshop co-director Donald I. Hammonds says this is an intensive learning experience. We're preparing them for their careers. We feel that we need to give them that extra leg up uh, that can be provided through the kinds of activities that take place in the workshop. Student Crystal Coleman has been in the workshop for two years. 
She says she has gained the skills that will make her a competent journalist. Oh, definitely. The professional experience, the interviews, um, my notes, everything that I have written down from resource speakers, they've all given me thoughts and knowledge, you know, to help me about my major and what I should, what I should know about for the future and how to be a better reporter. The Urban Journalism Workshop has made a difference in the lives of many teens. For KUJW News, this is Tanil Walker. The Pittsburgh Black Media Federation's Urban Journalism Workshop is in its 14th year of operation. Well, when we come back, our Deborah Todd will tell us how the Steelers are getting ready for this Sunday's game. Iron City and Icy Light bring you another Bird Thing Summer update. The Bird Thing Summer Tour will be making their stops on Thursday at these hot spots. Catch up with the tour at these hot spots on Friday. Stop down at the Iron City Icy Light Washington County Fair August 11th through 18th. Also on August 18th, it's the Iron City 3D Archery Shoot at Bull Creek Rodden Gun Club. Don't forget to check out these concerts at the Icy Light Amphitheater and catch these dates at the Fox Chapel Yacht Club Evil Eye Concert Series. For more Bird Thing Summer information, call the Icy Light Hotline at 237-1253. If you're hurt in an accident or disabled and can't work, who you choose as a lawyer could be one of the most important decisions you ever make. I'm attorney Edgar Snyder. At my law firm, we represent people who have been injured due to automobile and motorcycle accidents, defective products, and accidents on the job. We also represent people denied Social Security disability benefits. For a free consultation about your injury claim, call my law firm first. Remember, we're here for you. Call attorney Edgar Snyder, 391-201, 391-201. Deborah, I hear Hastings has decided to come back. Yes, he has, and it's about time, wouldn't we say? Yeah. <laughs> the Steelers have completed preparations for their game at Green, I mean, for Green Bay, and will head to Wisconsin tomorrow for their game Sunday night. There was a new face on the field this afternoon at practice as wide receiver Andre Hastings ended his holdout and reported to training camp. Hastings enjoyed his best NFL season last year, catching 48 passes during the regular season and a game-high 10 in the Super Bowl loss to Dallas. But he's obviously less than thrilled with being forced to report to camp. The Pirates have had pretty good success against the San Diego Padres this season, but unfortunately, not tonight. They had won four to seven games played prior to this one. Dan Marcelli and Fernando Valenzuela as starters, and the pros wasted no time getting on the board. Ken Caminetti with a sinking line in the center field that Jermaine Allensworth can't get to. The ball rolled to the warning track, and Tony Gwynn scored easy on the first. But Allensworth atoned for the play by hitting his first major league homer in the third, which tied the game 1-1. Then the Pies took the lead for good in the fourth. Um, Greg Vaughn with a leadoff homer to the left, his 33rd of the year and second since being acquired from Milwaukee. Your final score, San Diego 4, Pirates 1. Kurt Angle made Pittsburgh proud by bringing home a gold medal in this summer's Olympics. But does the city have anyone else who's um, prepared to do it in the year 2000? Our reporters Quaylen Murphy and Tia Grayson have the story on a few high school Olympic hopefuls. McKeesport High School basketball star Swintalia Cash has high hopes of becoming an Olympic athlete. Well, I'm hoping. I'm hoping to get there. Basically, it's going to take a lot of hard work and nail breaking to get there, but I want to be there. Swin Cash is just one of the many high school Olympic coaches in the Pittsburgh area. I'm Tia Grayson, and Quayla Murphy has more. LeVar Arrington is the North Hills High School football standout who hopes the Olympics will go for the goal in football in the year 2000. But believe it or not, he has loftier aspirations. Career-wise, I mean, I want to be a teacher, a special education teacher out of college. So um, I'm going to go into education. And that's as far as education-wise. As far as athletics, I want to go to the pro. I don't know how long it takes me, but I want to go. That's, I guess, a long time journey. But I want to, I want to accomplish being a teacher and being a pro athlete. Football may not be an Olympic sport yet, but track and field certainly is. And Heather Hanchak is one of the best in the country. In the state of Pennsylvania, I'm first in the 200 and 400. And in the country, I'm in the top 10 in the 200 and 400 um, among high school athletes. In the 400, which is my best event, I'm ranked fifth. So, and I have all American statuses in the 200 and 400. Advancing to the Olympics requires a lot of hard work and dedication. And these high school athletes have what it takes. This is Quayla Murphy reporting for KUJW News. That was great to see those students aspiring to be in the Olympics. Yes, it most certainly was. And don't forget to root for the Steelers tomorrow. Thanks, Deborah. <laughs> That's great.
What do Roseanne, Whitney Houston, and you have in common? You'll find out next when we come back. What is a Blue Ribbon used car? It's a quality, previously owned car from John Ceretti Chevrolet in Moon Township. Peace of mind from reputable dealers like Bond Boulevard Dodge and Shadyside. Great value for your dollar from Day Chevrolet in Monroeville. A wide selection of the best used cars available from Sea Harbor Chevrolet in Belverde. It's a dealer who stands behind his service, like Bob Smith Ford in Castle Shannon. If you're shopping for a used car now, buy from one of these Blue Ribbon used car dealers. Want to know what tuberous sclerosis is? Okay. Tuberous sclerosis is autism. Tuberous sclerosis is epilepsy. It's kidney failure, brain damage, mental disabilities, and tumors in every major organ. Tuberous sclerosis is Cody and Riley and Emily and Travis and Danielle. Sometimes it helps to put a face with a name. If you watched the Olympics, you heard America's national anthem a lot. How many people really do know the Star Spangled Banner? Our KUJW staff went to the street to find out. Okay, what happened to you? Just sing the Star Spangled Banner for a minute. Oh, yes. All right, come on, hurry up. This might be my last. Oh, yeah. I can't even do it. <laughs> about it for us too. Hey Robert, do you know the words? Of course I know the words. Could you sing it a little bit for us? <laughs> Maybe a little bit later. <laughs> <laughs> Our next report is in less than 30 minutes. NBC's Today Show is coming up next. Have a good weekend everyone. Good night. Good night.